uh, a little bit of a, a direction we're going to do overall. We let Bob Edwards do more, more talking about that. But the the common theme I think that is spoken unspoken that happens in martial arts more so than anywhere else. And I I kind of had a season where I was a youth pastor for 15 years. I couldn't get away with stuff there that I could do in the dojo. I changed more lives. Mac and Jerry smash his face in the mat than trying to teach a kid Bible study sometime. But uh, we had, um, the, the biggest thing is patience that Mark had the first time I met him. You guys heard the story and I won't go the whole thing, but I had every question. I was like Fred Watson meeting Ray McCallum. Ray's like, well, this guy's got more questions. But I did that to Mark and it was a Saturday afternoon. He's ready to leave. He did the demo and then I kept him for an hour. Well, what about this guy, this guy? What about this Kung Fu? And Mark just answered every question. So patient. He could have just told me, get lost. And that changed my life. That was, I think, the first time I remember an adult treating me with respect and courtesy and patience. And, you know, that's, I don't care. You know, we're talking about, we, we used to rule the city, you know. We were the Gracies for a time. Me, Steve Stilwell, Fred Watson, Steve Mackey, who was the fourth Steve dojo? Totser. Oh, yeah. Totser. We were the godfathers of Kansas City Karate. I mean, I'm we're over the hill now. We're has-beens, but it's better to be a has-been than it never was. And we had a half-page, yellow-page ad. That was a big deal back then. But we calculated half the people that did martial arts in Kansas City trained with one of us. You know, and all the people that won trained with us. You know, But um, that was our heritage, and Jim Cox was a big part of it, and I ran into him. And he sent me. He said, well, you know, I like to really read it. Can I send you a book? And he sent me a book, and it was called The Father's Blessing. It was about the Father's Blessing. And just basically how you can encourage and speak faith into someone, make them believe in themselves, and they just grow into what God made them to be. And that's what Mark Payne, Steve Mackey did for us every day. They beat the crap out of them. They didn't really hurt us. You know, we hear all the stories. Now, Jeff and Bob Thurman hurt us. Okay. <laughs> And a few of you other guys once in a while, Ray Pat. But Mark and Steve would always push you to 110% of what you thought you could do. They just had that. They were doing it for your own good. And it and it worked. And it was amazing. And I just, uh, you know, I could talk about Mark forever, but literally I've been trying to write a book about him. So we were going to do a video, and Bob and I are like, we can't, we'll cry. Because we didn't love him that much. But we know we'll be there. We hope he's happy. We hope he's explained some things to Jim, and Jim's hanging out with him. And I think that's, I know that's happened. I've, I've heard stories. I'll tell, can tell some other time. But uh, all this happens. I think the key thing is we we got a blessing that Bob Edwards is going to tell you about. But it's about you've got to pass on things with authority. And when we did the reunion in 2017, I talked with Mr. Harrison. Our theme is one tribe, many nations, or one nation, many tribes. I said, you're Moses. You're the guy. We're the 12 tribes. We got the Stillwell tribe, the Sean tribe, the Me tribe, the, the George Clark tribe, you know, but we're all part of your, your nation, you know, no matter how we've kind of, you know, those judo guys, whatever. They're still part of the family, even though they crawl around on the floor a lot. But, uh, and then I and then I said, and one other illustration is, you know, Mr. Harris was like, but you guys got to stay with it. I said, well, but we can have different expressions of what you taught us. I mean, after all, Jesus had, there's four Gospels. I mean, even his followers even had a little different interpretation of what he taught them. You know, isn't that okay for you? And there was a very long pause, and I can see Jim's mind. Well, I don't know. That was Jesus. He, I've got higher, you know, standards. I'm not sure. <laughs> and I told Sean one day, this is after he passed away, we were talking, I said, I, you know, I never knew what your dad, he didn't answer me. And I said, I, you know, I don't know if your, your dad agreed with me. And Sean said, well, he does now. <laughs> but, uh, Sean's just been one of my great role models. And, you know, I, I call him a friend, but he's, I'm so intimidated. Such a, I put him on such a pedestal that I named my son after him. And, uh, I should have named my next son after your middle name. It's, uh, we've been blessed, our whole family's been blessed because of what you taught us. But getting back to, and this is the last thing for, for me right now, that the father's passing it on. That's what all you guys are doing, whether you're teaching champs, teaching in your basement, your garage, whatever. All you old timers that got real jobs, you can't go open a dojo, but you can clean out one side, get rid of your, some of your toys, clean out your garage, throw a mat down. And the Gracies did it, that's how they grew great. And we have about six garage dojos happening right now. Steve Silva, top, most prolific, longest Machido kind of instructor in the city, teaches out of the garage. I'm like, where did I sign up? 
come over there for something, you know, but it's just, it doesn't matter. Like Jesus said, wherever two are gathered together, there's a dojo. Okay, so no matter how small you start, it's great. So, so the next thing we're going to do, I um, actually would like, um, well, Sean, you come help me with this because it's important. No, you. This one? Yeah. Okay. Me and Sean. Okay. Because this is to recognize lineage is a, is a, is a big thing in martial arts. You know, lineage, Nagamini, ba ba ba, Jim Wax, and that's what we did the other night. And we have developed ourselves instead of a you know a linear top down command thing. It's a round table. We have such a brotherhood, and we got we develop that by just beating the crap out of each other, honestly. But the lineage of uh, in Kansas City, Miss you know after Mr. Harrison was gone, it was Steve Mackey and Mark Payne, and Mark was Steve's instructor. And where did Mark get all that stuff? Where did he get it, Sean? Frank. From Frank Payne. So. Mr. Payne, can we present this to you, sir? And, uh, we could have done this before the internet was. We're going to explain where these certificates came from. I'm going to let Bob Edwards do that. But this says Otunsan, which means honorable father. And we're presenting you a uh, honorary black belt in our family because you mean so much to us. Thank you. So our mission is, how do we go forward? And uh, we wanted a big umbrella that, that reaches everybody and not just the Bushido Khan and the American Karate or Champs or you know the offshoots, the uh, combatives guys, the Special Forces, Judo, Jiu Jitsu. But uh, we haven't got a plan. We're working on it. But we do have a direction, we have a mission. And uh, I want to say that up front. You know, we're open to, to, to learning a lot, especially from young guys. But uh, we went on a search. It started, Bob Edwards started all this. What happened? Because after the last reunion in the 100 degree heat, we all died and thunderstorm and Armageddon, and then the locusts came and the other plague. I was like, I don't even do it at again. Bob's like, yeah, but what about our people? I'm like, yeah, they can go hang out with Brent. He's doing some, you know. But he wanted certificates because a lot of us never got them. And we started looking around and said, well, you know, we originally started with American Karate Black Belt Association. I talked to Mr. Cox, he's kind of been a mentor through this, and that's where he got his belt certificate from Mr. Harrison. And then what's really cool is in the process, I'm talking to my guys about how many guys certificates, blah, blah, blah. Ken Schroer, who trained with Mark, private lessons, sent me a copy of his black belt certificate. And it was from Dan Kennedy's association. And we didn't know Midori Yamabuto guy. And I was like, well, that's really cool. Mark and you, but it's, you know, it's not all locked about it. It's not the name, it's the people that count. And we went to AKKBA, talked to them, and then we figured out Pat Burleson and Alan Seen had kind of their own things. We were very close to uh, Pat Burleson. George and I could get down there a lot, hang out with all the guys in Texas. And, you know, Pat and Mr. Seen are like the godfather chair. But we were like, if there's two different groups, we, we want to talk to Mr. Burleson. And we did. So uh, it's a. We all basically went down there. We filled out all their online things. We put in for certificates. According, this isn't Bushido Khan. I want to say your Bushido Khan rank is set in stone forever. Nobody can ever take that away from you. Okay. What's kept this in? To me, it's almost passed on with Jim. A lot of what we did. Well, a lot of what we did in old days is illegal now. It's actually the truth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we have to adapt a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it was. And uh, so this is, uh, you know, we're calling it Bushido Kai, which is just to us, way the word school, way the word college, next step, doing a little different, but based on what we all have at Common Heritage. Come on up here, Bob, please. And uh, so we went down, we filled these out, we applied for certificates. The first one we got was a 10th degree black belt for Mr. Harrison, who we went down to ceremony with Pat Burleson, 150 people, and Bob was there. And then Pat did the presentation of all the other Steve Stillwell, all the big shots that we um, put in for high ranks, including Bob. Bob okay. Edwards. Um, welcome. Howdy. Appreciate yeah. everybody uh, coming tonight. And, and I know uh, a lot of this is uh, new. Okay. 
uh, but that's okay. I mean, that's that's this is this is normal. And uh, when we went to uh, Texas to uh, visit Mr. Burleson, it was on his birthday, as a matter of fact, and uh, uh, talked to me about his organization and getting the certificates and going forward with uh, uh, our martial arts here in Kansas City and all around the country. Uh, Bob Wall is also a director on that uh, within that organization, so uh, he's been very helpful as well. So when we got down there, I uh, some of you already heard this story, but you got to know if you're if you're around any black belts in this room, you're going to have to hear the same story over and over and over. And, over. and many wives have it memorized to a T. Right? Okay, so anyway, some of you already heard heard this story. But, uh, when I went down there and uh, I, I went up to talk to Mr. Burleson and, and I told him I was with Mr. Harrison. And he, and he, he motioned to me to come over to him because he was, he was very soft-spoken. Um, and he, uh, he told me that he spoke with Jim about 30 minutes before he passed. And that Jim told him to take care of his people. Okay, so that's, that's, what, that's what he's doing and that's, and that's what we're working to, to uh, go forward. Okay, so um, with that being said, you know this 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 is just the start for us, right? Uh, we're all in this together, and, and it's gonna it's gonna take all of us. Okay, so uh, I thank everybody that's been involved over the last many, I mean months, basically. Uh, I I can look around the room, and and everybody that's been involved helping us get this together is countless. I mean, it's just multiple guys: George, David Coes. Bob Wall, uh, Smokey today, awesome. You know, Ray McCallum, great stuff. To, uh, Jimmy, I mean, Jimmy's been relentless in, in getting all this done. You know, um, so it's a good thing. It's a very normal progression in martial arts, and uh, uh, I hope everybody uh, uh, gets their hands dirty and, and gets involved, and uh, and we'll go forward. Sound good? Jimmy is uh, a little stressed out, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So today he's 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 having a moment, right? And uh, so I tell him, I says, Jimmy, I says, the sun is warm, the grass is green. Just keep saying that to yourself. The sun is warm, the grass is green. I used to tell my guys that I I used to build jets, okay, and it very stressful, okay. Well, when my guys would start having a fit, I would say the sun is warm, the grass is green. They would all repeat that, you know. But anyway, it was from a Mr. Mr. Miyagi said that, right? right. Kid, great uh, anyway, so he, he's been saying it back to me all day. So, <laughs> and then I, Bob, Bob's, Bob's really been, you know, George and Bob carrying most of the weight of all the behind the scenes stuff in this. We call George Ambassador. You heard about, you know, what is it, Kevin Bacon, the six degrees of separation or something? With George, it's two. You know George, you know everybody. He ain't gotta go through you know. He's he's really the reason all these out of town Dick and Terry's big shots are here is George. Now sometimes he's the reason they don't come <laughs> So uh, that's another story. But George is very close to all the guys in Texas. Texas is our brother city, and you guys know from the old days when down there and fought there. Well Ray Callum and Sean fought for a national title when they were 15, 14 and juniors, and uh, Ray wants a rematch. <laughs> now, those who went to school know Sean's story, but I'm going to, uh, real quick, the WMRA is an association, we have a charter under Pat Burleson, and there's these other guys, you know, I don't really know if we we'll recognize their names, but they all founded this, like, with the AKGBA and this group, go back 50 years, and there's some guys named Steve Armstrong, I don't really know him, Ed Parker, Jim Harrison, you may have heard of him, June Ray, Dean LaBelle, Robert Trias, Joe Lewis, Bill Wallace, and then this other guy, Bob Wall. I don't know, anybody heard, heard of him? They're all on all the certificates. So we were like, we're in. That's our family. And uh, so we did do the process, and some of you saw on Zoom, we got a uh, Mark Payne, or uh, Steve Mackey was promoted. Anybody see that on Zoom? Okay. And, uh, 
not to put any style or other people down, but we traveled to Texas and we got to see a lot of promotions and they're explaining the degrees. And we were really, you know, Mr. Harrison's like, black belt, you made it. Because his standard was you had to be able to whip 99 out of 100 people in any room. Well, there's 100 people in this room, that wouldn't work, right? But we didn't know he meant literally. And at the same time, you know, it was that kind of standard he had. And then we've gone and seen a lot of different things, but, um, you know, Steve deserved that way, way, as we always say. Every time, how many of you guys have ever heard this expression during a, a promotion in our, our tribes? Well deserved and long overdue. Amen. Yeah. Every time. Especially Tom, good time. So anyhow, here's our new uh, uh, Pat Burleson, um, George Minshew. George Minshew came and introduced himself and says, I'm your daddy now. But, uh, it says, the WMRA is a round table with no president or offers. You may use association credentials with your own movement or association credentials. It's an individual choice. It's not exclusive. You can belong to Al Redenauer, you know, whatever group. We're not trying to control anybody. We're trying to free you and empower you. Says as a WMRA, WMARA, we got to get a member. I accept the tribute that my peers are paying me to my rank, status, and pioneer part in the modern day martial arts evolution. I recognize the accomplishments, rank, credentials, and the authority of others listed as heads of styles and systems just to be free and independent with the power to create forms, methods, test requirements, and to work rank. And uh, we'll go into, we have a whole kind of university model for just evolving our systems and tests and rank requirements and that's a whole discussion we want everybody in on you know over the years because we got good stuff we got stuff that we did bad fix it go forward we got guys doing stuff way advanced than what we did you know it's just continual evolution improvement and that's where mr harrison developed the system out of so it's just you know that's the principle so in this group we did all the work to um tell them who's who we are here's our guys and I was very apprehensive about them saying, well, what degree do you think this guy should be? And it was kind of a committee of us. And Bob Wall said, you guys got this all wrong. It's not about the rest of the world. You've already kicked their rear. You already got Bob Thurman World Champion. It's about just giving honor to those within your organization to let them know you appreciate their long years and hard work. It's not about who's the baddest, who's the you know, because we're going to have who's got the best sidekick. It's only going to be Conley and Roy, and it's you know, at home. But it's it's about everything, the totality of your your character and your contribution to martial arts, and what you've done for others in your lives using that gift of martial arts. And uh, it's like the parable of talents. You take what you're given and blessed with, and what can you do to return? So after the reason we did Mr. Harrison first, and he was promoted in Montana uh, officially at the memorial last week, and that's why we've wanted to do this after out of respect for that and go in order but also because we want Dave Coase to be here because he's part of our our new thing and uh, just kind of a he's also a forefather especially in the combatives and the things that we need to learn more of so he could it just worked that he could be here this weekend and I tried not to have nightmares because it was like the same weekend that we had our last one was 100 degrees or 